Papermaking, one of the ancient Chinese four great inventions, has made a significant contribution to the spread of culture and the progress of civilization around the world, earning high praise from later generations. The inventor of papermaking is known to be Cailun from the Eastern Han period, yet many are unaware that he was actually a eunuch. Typically, the primary duty of a eunuch would be to serve their master, which raises the question, why did Cailun turn to papermaking? This video will delve into the story behind it. Cailun, styled Jingzhong, was from Leyang in Guiyangjun. Born in 63 AD into a farming family, Cailun was a bright child from a young age, keen on observing the minutiae and adept at summarizing his observations. In 75 AD, following the ascension of Emperor Emperor Zhang of Han Liu Da, there was a selection for smart and clever children to serve in the palace, and Cailun was chosen. He was castrated and entered the palace at the young age of 12. In fact, the age at which Cailun was castrated and entered the palace was not considered early for the Eastern Han period. According to historical analysis, the average age for eunuchs being castrated and entering the palace during the Eastern Han was 9.6 years old, the second youngest in Chinese history after the Ming Dynasty's average of 9.2 years old. Upon entering the palace, Cailun could not have held a significant position but was one of the least influential eunuchs, serving as a Xiao Huangma. However, as the saying goes, gold will always shine, and through his intelligence and wisdom, Cailun gradually rose to the position of deputy head of the Edict Examination Bureau. His daily responsibilities included conveying the emperor's orders to ministers and arranging the sequence and waiting areas for those coming to the palace to meet the emperor. After the accession of Emperor Zhang of Han, the third emperor of the Eastern Han, his shrewdness and alertness earned him the favor of the then Empress Dou Shi, who made him her confidant. Amid the complex struggles within the palace, Tai Lun's character began to distort. Since Queen Dou did not have a son, while Emperor Zhang of Han's favored concubine Song Guerin gave birth to a son, the crown prince Liu Qing, this caused dissatisfaction in Queen Dou. She instructed her subordinates to use any means necessary to eliminate Song Guerin. Song Guerin and her sisters, who were also favored by Emperor Zhang of Han for their beauty, sought a medicinal herb outside the palace, Raw Daughter, known from ancient texts for its properties in cooling blood, detoxifying, and treating various ailments. This was a normal act, intended to maintain good health. However, Queen Do seized on this, accusing the sisters of engaging in sorcery and attempting to bring chaos to the palace. Repeated lies eventually become perceived as truth, leading to the demotion of the Song sisters and affecting the crown prince Liu Qing, who was demoted to king of Qinghe. Initially, the two sisters merely lost their status, and since Emperor Emperor Zhang still held affection for them, he did not wish to harshly punish them. However, Empress Queen Dou did not let them off easily and continued her attacks. Tai Lun, solely for his personal gain and following the Empress's wishes, fabricated absurd charges against the two noblewomen, leading them to commit suicide in despair. Tai Lun played a disgraceful role in this palace political struggle, marking the true beginning of his rise to a prestigious position in the palace. However, his ascent to power was far from honorable. Soon after, Emperor Zhang died, and Emperor He ascended the throne. In fact, Emperor He was not the biological child of Empress Queen Dou, but was taken from another concubine in order to secure her position, making him essentially an adopted son. Since the Emperor was young, Dowager Empress Queen Dou began to rule from behind the curtains. Tai Lun was promoted to the position of palace attendant in ordinary because of his role in the conspiracy against Song Guerin. The position of palace attendant in ordinary, a high-ranking eunuch close to the emperor, involved delivering imperial edicts, managing documents, and participating in state affairs, granting him significant power and influence. Empress Dowager Queen Dou, wanting to keep an eye on Liu Zhao, assigned Tai Lun to monitor him, treating Tai Lun as a trusted aide. Unexpectedly, Tai Lun switched sides, aligning with Liu Zhao and expelling the Dou family from the court. Empress Dowager Queen Dou deeply regretted trusting him. After her downfall, Tai Lun aligned himself with the next key figure, Empress Deng Sui, who was not as interested in the emperor's affection but rather appreciated fine arts and crafts. To curry favor, Tai Lun took charge of the palace's imperial workshops and crafts, 
ensuring he could present the finest items to Empress Deng Sui first. It is believed that it was during this time Tai Lun became involved with the Eastern Han's finest craftsmanship and sought to improve the existing papermaking technique. According to the History of the Later Han Dynasty, documents and books were traditionally written on bamboo strips or silk, which were either expensive or cumbersome. Seeking innovation, Tai Lun used inexpensive materials such as tree bark, rags, hemp, and fishing nets to make paper, significantly reducing the cost of paper production and laying the groundwork for its widespread use. In 105 AD, Tai Lun presented his papermaking improvements to the emperor, who highly praised Tai Lun talent and promoted the technology throughout the realm. By 114 AD, the court honored Tai Lun with the title Marquis of Longting, and henceforth, paper was known as Tai Lun paper. Unfortunately, after the death of Emperor He, Empress Deng, who had no children of her own, decided to appoint a young prince who had been living among the common people as the new emperor. This prince became Emperor Emperor Shang of Han Dynasty, but his reign was short-lived, lasting less than a year. This pattern of short-lived emperors became a recurring issue during the Middle and Late Eastern Han Dynasty. Due to complications in the imperial succession, Empress Deng had no choice but to appoint the son of Qinghe Wang Liu Qing, Liu Hu, as the new emperor, who would later be known as Emperor and Deng Sui, known as the Crown of the Empress, was the Empress of Emperor Wajang during his reign. With the young emperor being inexperienced and naive, Empress Deng controlled the imperial court. The issue arose with Emperor En, who was the son of Liu Qing and thus the grandson of Song Guiren, posing a fatal risk to the stability of the regime. In 121 AD, Empress Dowager Empress Deng died. It was also in this year that Emperor En began to rule personally. Old grievances resurfaced, and many brought up the past actions of Empress Dowager Empress Deng against Song Guiren, which had led to the demotion of Emperor En's father, Qinghe Wang Liu Qi. Emperor En, already dissatisfied with Emperor He's prolonged control and eager to deal with supporters like Tai Lun, was enraged to learn that his grandmother's death was also at Tai Ho hands. Thus, the fate of Tai Lun, a veteran of four dynasties, finally reached its end. Emperor En ordered him to confess his crimes at the Judiciary Department. After decades of prominence, the now elderly Tai Lun, over 60 years old, could not bear such humiliation. Knowing the unpredictable nature of palace politics and realizing there was no turning back without any protection, he chose death over the possibility of enduring further indignities in prison. Therefore, Tai Lun, who had been a dominant figure in the Eastern Han Dynasty for decades, calmly arranged his attire, cleansed himself, and, just as he had driven the sister Song Guiren to suicide with his slander, ended his own life by taking poison in 121 AD. This was only months after the death of his new patron, Empress Dowager Empress Deng, and nearly half a century since he had entered the palace in 75 AD. Tai Lun life story, marked by the same means through which he rose to success and then fell from grace, represents a tragic arc of gaining power and meeting one's demise in the very place and manner of one's ascent. Do you know the story of Kai Luan before, or do you know how the paper was made in the beginning? Welcome to evaluate the area to say, if you like this video, please point more praise evaluation subscription, your support is the greatest impetus for me to update.